Good morning guys, how are we all doing? I am Dan from Trading with Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin for our charts and look at that. We have printed uh, new all-time highs for Bitcoin. Uh, literally just easing off those uh, all-time highs. Uh, still holding above our previous uh, all-time high, above above our our range that we've got drawn in. Um, so obviously that is a uh, that is highly bullish. We are now in uh, basically in the price discovery uh, price discovery uh, area. Um, so yeah, things can get things can get wet and wild. Things can we can pop up. We can go into the into the 70 Ks. We can then come back and back test this as a um, as support and then continue onwards and upwards or or this could be a uh, just a bit of a for a uh, off price action um, above above this previous all-time high before we potentially drop back down into the into into our previous range and trade sideways um, we shall have to see it is early days in this breakout we have come um, pretty pretty far in a straight line um, and that is not to say we can't just uh, consolidate here bull flag it out and continue on upwards um, yeah not to say that at all um, so yeah, we'll just have to. We will just have to all, uh, all just see, see how how this how this plays out. Obviously, there are going to be a lot of shorts um, to be squeezed in the market, um, and yeah, I mean that could obviously give us uh, give us some uh, fuel for some pretty pretty aggressive moves and pretty aggressive wicks to the upside um, before ultimately uh, coming back down. Um, and then consolidate, consolidating and then potentially trading sideways. But yeah, obviously everything, everything looking great. I mean, if we do just want to kind of look at this as a little bit of a fractal of this sideways range we're in here, um, we did get some periods where we kind of broke out and then came back in, broke above and came back in. Um, so we could see a similar sort of um, um, action uh, where we break above and then come back in. This this wider range. Um, <coughs> that is not to say that is de that is what. Um, that is definitely what's going to happen. I mean, there is nothing to stop us. We are at all-time highs now. There is nothing to stop us. Um, and literally just continuing um, onwards, onwards and upwards here. Nothing to stop that happening. Um, but, but like I said, um, we will uh, at some point we'll have to see some sideways to down consolidation. So it's a case of where that comes from, and it could come from this level. Like I said, we could then pop back below this previous all-time high. Um, and then uh, drop back into this zone. And then realistically, as long as we're holding above, uh, above basically this area, this this level, this uh, si well, 64, 63, 64. Well, not 63. Sorry, that's a bit low. But yeah, 64 thousand dollar level above here. Um, then yeah, things will still look really good. I mean, so if we do drop back into this wider range, this range here, um, and we just hold this top, this top part of it above 64,000, and that would be obviously very bullish. Um, and it would just uh, just look like um, um, some nice higher higher lows uh, before yeah moving onwards and upwards. But yeah, everything looking very good here. Um, <coughs> no doubt, um, all driven by um, by Barry Silver and his um, and his um, potentially um, <coughs> spot Bitcoin ETF uh, ETF uh, um, on the cards. Um, that is, um, I think, that is what this um, this move is uh, is based off. But um, but yeah, we shall see. Obviously, that would be the most incredibly bullish thing for Bitcoin. A spot ETF would be just that would be it. Um, none of this uh, paper market shenanigans that we know obviously goes on with um, with precious metals. Um, if we literally have um, a spot ETF for uh, Bitcoin, that literally would be like the underlying getting bought by obviously all the all the hedge fund managers, and it would be the preferred ETF as well for people to trade. Um, and then would then hopefully become the most liquid one. And yeah, I think we'll be we'll be well on our way. It it's just. I mean, as optimistic as I want to be, I mean, that it just seems like that would be a pretty much a disaster for Finance 1.0 if something like that was to happen, um, because they literally will be relinqu relinquishing their ability to uh, <coughs> smash markets with paper contracts. But Bitcoin isn't like precious metals anyway. We can't all take delivery and hold uh, on to... Um, onto um, um, precious metal positions um, but do you know what we can very easily do we can um, just um, hold our actual real Bitcoin 
um, in a very in very easily. Um, so it is it is a different dynamic there, and it is a di it's actually a dynamic that doesn't even uh, apart from obviously the custody the element, it doesn't even <coughs> it doesn't even need an ETF. You don't need an ETF because anybody can just um, <coughs> hold as much Bitcoin as they like on a on a USB drive or a ledger or whatever basically on their computer. Um, and it's not the same as uh, other markets, but um, but yeah, there we go. Bitcoin making the move, looking good, um, rallying off good news. Um, I mean, ultimately, we know all the tre all the trends, all the all the stochastics were all lining up yesterday. So um, in the in that perfect storm of bullishness um, that we have, we don't often see. But yeah, so it's no real surprise to see us moving up off that. But yeah, at some point, uh, we will have sideways sideways to down consolidation. It's just a case of where it comes from. Um, and where it comes down to um, clearly um, ethereum as we uh, as we would have guessed is uh, is struggling um, to keep up with Bitcoin but that is fine this is this is just literally how we know this market works we just this is this is literally the dynamic this is one of the most obvious things uh, in this market is when Bitcoin moves <coughs> this comes down um, and then when Bitcoin um, consolidates, uh, big, this moves up. That is literally, this is the way. This is the way of the mar this market. Um, but yeah, we had a nice little bounce at this important horizontal here. Uh, broke that and we're now trading below that. I mean, this is the main one we've got to realistically hold. Uh, as long as we hold above here um, and then continue on upwards, we'll be looking good. And then that next move upwards, I'm pretty sure is going to take us through this um, this resistance level. Um, and then this uh, pretty much, I mean, we are we will be off off to the races, um, potentially looking at, um, I mean, yeah, potentially heading on our way to actually like eight thousand dollar Ethereum. And I just will refer you back to how similar this kind of looks to the Russell uh, and then what happened when the Russell broke out a lot of uh, sideways within a wide range of a, a long period of time. Um, and then um, all of a sudden, bang. And that is kind of um, what I expect to see in this um, in this Ethereum Satoshi pairing, just a similar. I mean, it doesn't matter this is the Russell. This is just literally just an example of a chart. Um, that's where a lot of of your analysis and um, gauging the markets will come from, just by what looking at so many charts, looking how they trade, looking how they move, and then you just see similar uh, chart patterns over other charts. But yeah, look, they're similar to this trade, trading sideways, zigzagging about, and then all of a sudden, bang! That is literally what I am expecting um, for um, yeah for for this asset basically. Um, if we kind of look, um, it's, it's very similar, trading sideways, trading sideways over a long period of time and then bang, we'll be off to the races, we've got targets to the upside, um, I think, where was the one, North Spot 1-3 or something, wasn't it, uh, yeah, 1-1, one, one. yeah, this is ultimately where I think um, we could be heading, which would be an absolutely fantastic move of Ethereum against Bitcoin from present um, levels of, um, of, uh, <laughs> yeah, 60. <coughs> so I've got a bit of a tickly cough this morning of over 60%. So that is would be a phenomenal move um, against in, in Satoshi value. So don't forget this isn't in dollar value. If just dollar value alone, we'll just we'll just have a look at it, what it would mean in dollar value alone. Um, and then that wouldn't be um, wouldn't be where we'd actually end up because in that scenario, you'd have to expect Bitcoin to also be higher as well. Uh, but in dollar value alone, sixty percent puts us. Um, oh, don't tell me it's going to be like eight thousand. Um, yeah, not far. Just basically, yeah, it was just over sixty percent, wasn't it? So yeah, it's going to put us about eight thousand dollar Ethereum. But like I said, um, that will only happen with with Bitcoin being at a higher value anyway. Um, so therefore, it will be higher than eight thousand. So. Uh, eight thousand dollars so yeah i mean people some some people are thinking ethereum is going to like thirty thousand dollars um some people thinking twenty thousand i mean um with the staking coming in and the reduction of supply the the actual usage of the market burning burning like we've had i think i've had a whole first deflationary whole week um and then yeah it'll just become deflationary all the time um and then also people will just keep compounding and staking their reward, rewards rather than what they uh they they're proof of work miners selling because obviously they need to sell for like electricity costs and whatever they're doing um but yeah i mean it's just massively bullish for this this is the this is the world computer this is the asset of the future bitcoin i mean yeah it's great it's great as a as the uh, as the underlying um market um um currency um but i mean even then ultimately ethereum can take over that it can take over uh, bitcoin's market cap 
Um, so yeah, that is enough crazy bullish Ethereum, uh, Ethereum talk. Uh, Bitcoin dominance um, having a, a nice move up, clearly off this move from Bitcoin. Um, <coughs> got um, got obviously um, horizontals around here. We'll just extend this along. Um, got levels of uh, resistance around that we are coming into. I mean, again, if if, the, if Bitcoin keeps moving, we are going to blast through these. Um, if Bitcoin does uh, start to trade sideways, we are not going to blast through these. But realistically, uh, this is looking. Uh, this is on the longer term. On the longer term time frame, is obviously downwards, but looking like a pennant as well. Which obviously you would uh, you would have to um, you would have to assign higher probabilities that it will break to the downside, being a. Uh, being a basically a bear flag, uh, obviously off off a off a move down, uh, consolidating towards these lows. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it could also be a bottom in formation, but realistically, you're just gonna just have to look at your levels, um, and then if we break above, then yeah, we're going down up. If we break below, then yeah, we're going down. But uh, just statistically, um, in my mind, this would be uh, more likely to break down. But yeah, we've got plenty of scope to put in a lower high. Uh, relative to this high and this high plenty of room still to move upwards to put in that high so yeah i mean alts could uh, certainly experience more pain uh, more pain for the time being whilst bitcoin uh, bitcoin does its thing um yes S uh, yeah s p futures uh looking strong um the dollar easing off a little bit dollar easing off a little bit but we're still uh we're still at pretty high levels uh we did come down um we did attempt to um try and take out this uh, well let's say try and take out we tested this support um and then look we bounced all the way actually to uh printing new uh, new highs relative to these highs so pretty aggressive uh move and now we are coming back down so um yeah it'd be interesting to see where this goes you guys know that i don't particularly care uh about this uh this anymore because i just don't particularly care about fiat currencies because central banks are now uh pretty much losing control and um well and and credibility which is basically is their only control is credibility they have no real control um and it's all based on um on it's all based on confidence and yeah people are just losing confidence in them um so yeah ultimately where these go relative to other countries it countries of yeah other countries currencies but yeah where this goes obviously where currencies go relative to other currencies is uh it's pretty much of no consequence um <coughs> to me anymore um <coughs> obviously if you're a currency trader it is but if you're a currency trader just trade trade the charts i mean it that that's a good thing about forex forex is uh good for literally just trading charts not having a view uh on where you think it's going ultimately and literally just trading what you see that's what i do think is a good thing about forex you don't um you don't tend to uh formulate as much bias um with a currency against another currency because there's just so many variables you just kind of know that it's not necessarily a good idea uh to um to form a bias um 10 year as well um <coughs> still drifting down as well um yeah 10 year drifting down someone did ask about uh to look at um copper as well um <clears throat> so yeah um yeah copper had uh obviously a big run up basically if you want to um understand what's going on with copper it literally just comes down to china uh what china is doing with um what china is doing uh with obviously it's, it's home building and stuff um and um uh, it's just its property uh it's just building i mean ultimately some of these companies are, are like evergrande and whatever are going bust um but that building is going to continue they're not going to leave a lot of them just there so the the uh the construction will continue just with a washout of um certain investors and uh, and then probably like a loss of a lot of foreign foreign capital um no surprise surprise no no shock there um but yeah um so but obviously if uh, china does like meaningfully stop um stop its construction then yeah that will hit copper hard um copper literally is is seen as like a, a form of currency in china like uh certain certain entities will just like a stockpile and hold warehouses full of copper uh and then they use they, they use that just as as an asset to as as collateral as an asset or just to trade uh to trade with uh transferring ownership um copper literally is a currency uh, in China, but yeah, China. This is this is down to China. It just ignoring and anything else. Um, and then obviously this is part of um, the overall uh, global uh, the global um, in inflation deflation debate is whether China is still going to be buying or or not um, buying commodities because they are obviously one of the world's biggest uh, biggest buyers of of uh, of all things all things um, all things commodity wise. 
Um, so yeah, there's copper. I mean, yeah, but just looking at it, you can see we are just basically trading sideways. Ultimately, it'll break up or down from this range. Um, we might as well just draw some horizontals whilst we've got the chart here. Um, just for the uh, just for the sake of it, we kind of like we can draw like an area here, um, and then the area to the downside. Um, draw. Oh, not got not got. Oh, we didn't even get the other one either. So I've got to click it again. We have got these areas. Yeah, so basically, um, we probably expect it just to trade sideways uh, between these areas until it doesn't. Um, and then when it doesn't, it'll either break on higher um, whilst we get massive inflation um, worldwide, or it'll break lower when we go into a bit of a deflationary uh, bust, um, which we may go into a. Uh, it's with with metals. Um, everything like uh, industrial uh, and oil also um has been rallying with commodities has been going up while well, obviously gold and silver have been struggling um but we may move into a different paradigm where um where we sort of go into a bit of a deflationary potentially deflationary environment where commodities will um commodities will then um underperform industrial uh, commodities un underperform and oil um and then obviously the precious metals start to then do better as as in that in that um in that process we'll have real yields um basically uh real yields uh going down um in which case we'll expect a rally in a precious metal so that may be the dynamic that happens we maybe have um have um these start to ease off and then um gold and silver perform due to their like their precious metal status um rather than these just being linked to like uh just uh um um basically economic growth um but yeah let's uh, now have a anything else you want to look at here um yeah not really let's just have a quick look at nascoin because it's just uh it's just a crazy chart uh look at it uh what a genius what a genius kathy woods is what a genius um i'm sure she's averaging on something that's going bust as well at the moment i can't forget what it was now i remember i remember good old uh peter schiff telling me uh i can't remember what it was now <laughs> um so well, let's see if I can remember what was it. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't WeWork, obviously. Um, it was. Um, <clears throat> it was. Uh, what was it? I can't. I can't remember what she was buying. Was it was um, still basically getting. Oh, that was it. Um, Zillow. She was buying. She's averaging. She's averaging. Um, <clears throat> averaging. Averaging. Buying down. She's buying the dip in Zillow. But um, I think Zillow's um, um, about done. Um, so she might struggle with that one. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's look at the stochastics. Uh, let's look at the stochastic. Yeah, four hour getting a bit toppy, but obviously four hours not necessarily the main driver when we're in these uh, these toppy heights. But yeah, four hour is uh, is looking a bit toppy here. I suspect ten hour is getting a bit extended as well um, when it decides to low. Yeah, ten hour getting up there. Still got so still got some juice in that tank, and there'll be a bit extra juice in the twelve hour tank. Yeah, twelve hour's got a decent amount to run. Daily's going to be looking great as well. Just great as well daily looking great uh two day looking good as well three i mean three day look we know these are all looking good three day looking good five day looking good weekly looking good bi-weekly looking brilliant monthly looking good um <clears throat> i mean yeah like i said um we are in in price discovery by definition um we are we are looking to <clears throat> see where we put in the next local high uh medium term high um, and then we are looking to then see where we put in our uh, medium term um, higher low um, ideally higher low um, but I'm sure it will be uh, as sure as you can be in these markets but yeah higher low and then yeah we'll just continue onwards and upwards um, so we are just uh, we this is just um, this is just basically kind of what we are expecting into Q4 into into Q uh, Q1 next year um before before the uh, the uh, the SH1T hits the fan um start a Q2 next year make hay, make hay whilst the sun shines um fill your boots um start getting defensive at some point at some point um but um now's probably not the time to do that um and yeah let's just uh, let's just, let's do this guys uh, so yeah thanks for listening this is not a financial advice i'm not a financial advisor always do your own research and i shall speak to you guys soon